Hello, everybody. I am hoping that the sound is working this time, and I'm going to share my screen with you for practice on lesson four of module four. All right, <clears throat> so sharing my screen. There we go. Let's see if we can get that a little bit clearer for us. All right. So we're starting off. It says Dan has a flower shop. He has a display of 36 roses. He sells three bouquets of four roses on Monday and two bouquets of five roses on Tuesday. What expression models the number of roses Dan has left in the display? So there are a lot of um, clue words for us here and lots of information. So let's see what we can do. He has a display of 36 roses. That's his total. He sells three bouquets of four roses. And I marked of with that little bubble cloud because I talked about the word of in math many times can mean multiply. So that was on Monday and two bouquets of five roses on Tuesday. We need the expression that models the number of roses he has left in the display. So we have a lot of clue words for the operations we're going to do. He starts, we know the total is 36 roses. If he sells three bouquets of four on Monday, what would that look like to write three bouquets of four? If I have three bouquets of four, so I would need to get that answer. And I would also need to get for Tuesday, two bouquets of five roses. So I would need that answer. The question is how many does he have left of the 36? So that word left should tell you, you would take the 36 roses, you would subtract what he sold on Monday in his bouquet and subtract what he sold on Tuesday in his bouquet. And that would be what he has left. All right, for the next one, we talked about braces and brackets in class. So it just says, describe how you would evaluate. And if you remember first, I said, it's like an escape room. We start all the way on the inside. So we're gonna start all the way inside with this six minus two, and we would do that work first. And then we would move out to the brackets. So parentheses first, then if we are moving out to the brackets, it would then be 24 divided by, this would now be a four. And then we're moving out to the braces. So next I'm moving out, I have 24 divided by four, that would have given me six. And now I'm out to the six minus four. Oops, that should have been a comma, sorry. Six minus four. And finally, I would do two times three. So our final answer should be six if we were to solve that. As long as you recognize that we're starting all the way on the inside, we work parentheses. Once we evaluate there, we move to brackets. We reevaluate there. We move to braces before we can do anything outside of those grouping symbols. All right. Where can we put the parentheses to rewrite the numerical expression for the value? So if we want this to equal one, he said this can kind of be some mental math. So if I think about my parentheses here at 36 divided by nine, I know I would do that first. That would give me four plus three is seven minus two, that does not equal one. So I'm going to move my parentheses now and do nine plus three. That would give me 12, 36 divided by 12 minus two. 36 divided by 12 would be three minus two. That would give me one. So 36 divided by the sum of nine and three minus two would be our new expression. 20 minus two times four plus one. Again, start at the beginning. If I put parentheses around 20 minus two, I would have 18 
18 times four, well, that's gonna give me a bigger number than my value is not gonna be 10 if I have to also add a one. So I'm gonna stop right there thinking about that. What if I put parentheses around two times four? That would equal eight. 20 minus eight equals 12 plus one is 13. So that's not going to work. Let's put the parentheses around four plus one, that equals five. 20 minus two times five. 2 times 5 equals 10, 20 minus 2, 20 minus 10 equals 10. So we want our parentheses in this case to be at the end around 4 plus 1. So we have 20 minus 2 times the sum of 4 and 1. All right, <clears throat> starting at the front of this expression, 15 plus 17 divided by 8 minus 4. If I start at the beginning, 15 plus 17. If my parentheses are there, that would equal 32. 32 divided by eight equals four minus four would be zero. Can't have that. If I put parentheses here, can I do 17 divided by eight? I cannot do that without having a remainder. So I don't wanna do that. Let's see, eight minus four, if the parentheses are here, eight minus four equals four. 15 plus 17 divided by four, Oh, can I do 17 divided by four? No. All right, let's see. So it doesn't say anything here about just adding one set of parentheses. So now because none of my, my groupings worked, I'm gonna try more than one set. So what if I put parentheses around 15 plus 17 and eight minus four? 15 plus 17 was 32 divided by eight minus four is four, 32 divided by four would give us eight. So in this case, we would need more than one set of parentheses. We would have the sum of 15 and 17 divided by the difference of eight and four. Okay, and last one, let's start at the front. 12 minus three, that would be nine. Nine times eight, Nine times eight, 72, 72 minus six, 66. That one worked out nicely right from the beginning. So we'll put 12 minus three in parentheses. So then we have the difference of 12 and three times eight minus six. Anthony says that he can evaluate the numerical expression five, the sum of five and four times three minus two without parentheses and get the same answer. Is he correct? Well, let's do it. Let's do it with the parentheses. We get 25. Let's do it without the parentheses. And if you need to freeze or pause your video so that you, I'm going a little bit quickly on this. So you can either check your answer or you've paused the video and you're working. So did he get the same answer? No, Anthony, that is not correct. Why not? What was the difference when we have the parentheses, when we don't have the parentheses? Here, we started with that group because we have the parentheses. When we have no parentheses and we evaluate, we would multiply first. So we will not get the same answer. And we've talked about that in class as far as the parentheses are important. We're going to get a different answer most of the time. Let's see about this test prep. You might wanna pause the video here, go through this page on your own and come back and check with me. Let's see if you're ready. Use parentheses to rewrite the numerical expression. 25 minus four times three plus two, and we wanted to have a value of 11. 25 minus four, if I put the parentheses there, that is 21 times seven, or I'm sorry, times three is going to give me 63 plus two is 65. That won't work. If I put my parentheses around four times three, that equals 12. 25 minus 12 equals 13, plus two equals 15. 
that won't work. If I put that around the three plus two, I would do that first. Three plus two equals five. Five times four equals 20. 25 minus four would equal 20. I'm sorry, 25 minus 20 would equal five. Oh, I got all covered up. Four, if I put it back here, that was five. Four times five equals 20. 25 minus 20 would equal five. None of those work. We're gonna try again. What if I doubled up the parentheses? 25 minus four is 21 times three plus two equals five. 21 times five, that's not going to get me 11. So here's another way that you could look at it. What if you put more than one set in that parentheses? What if we put 25 minus four times three in parentheses? That would become 12. 25 minus 12 is 13. Then we add two, we still don't get 11. Let's try the last part of it. Parentheses, four times three equals 12, plus two equals 14. 25 minus 14, there it is. So it's not always just a pair or one operation within the parentheses. Sometimes we have to adjust, move it around and try it in different groups. Select all the expressions that have a value of 28. I'm going to have you pause if you haven't already. Go through each of these. Pay attention to when you have parentheses and multiplying and adding. Do it in the correct order. And when you come back, I'll have your answers shown. Answers would be A and D. Make sure you're not just marking those down. Make sure you've done the work so you're ready for the test. Use the numbers one through five to place the steps in order to correctly evaluate the numerical expression. So if we look at this, here we have some brackets, braces, and parentheses. We're gonna start here. That would be number one, right? We're going to add one plus four. After we do that, we would have, this would be number two, six minus five. Subtract the value in the parentheses from six, that would be number two. Then we would have to multiply that value by six, multiply the value in the brackets by six. Once we have all that done, we would have five plus 60 divided by our value. So next we would be doing the dividing. And finally, we would add five. All right. Let's do number 12 at the bottom. Write a numerical expression to model the situation. Kristen read her book for two hours after school. Then she read for another hour before she went to sleep. What would our numerical expression be? How would you solve it without actually giving me an answer? She read for two hours. She read for another hour before she went to sleep. So it would be two plus one. And if you did the work for number 11, you're checking with me, your answer here would have been 25 minutes. All right, that is it for this lesson. Make sure you bring your questions to class tomorrow. We will have our review day tomorrow and be moving on for our test of module four. So bring your questions tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye.